Welcome Yamhill County to Speaking Frankly. I'm your host, Howie Harkema, and our tagline is, and how we do win. Today I have the Vice President and Outreach Coordinator, Maria Mim, from Beyond Backpacks. Welcome, Maria. Thank you for having me. It's wonderful to have you here. Thank you so much for agreeing to do this. Um, so what is Beyond Backpacks? Beyond Backpacks is a program that is uh, countywide, and we serve the highest needs families in Yamhill County through grades K through 12 in public schools, and we get them a backpack and school supplies to start school year off right. And so how long have you been doing this? Beyond Backpacks has only been Beyond Backpacks for about the last two years. We started out as Operation Backpack. Right. And we started in 2004. Um, I was not part of that when it started. It started at a local church here in town who the a couple ladies just saw a need for their congregation and got together and decided, let's get some stuff for them so they can have school supplies and... That was how it started the first year, and then it has grown to what we are today at about 950 kids That's over the county. That's unbelievable. And I have um, volunteered in the past many mm -hmm. years um, at one of the tables, yep. and it's one of my favorite days of the year. I'm glad to hear that. Um, so uh, if you want to get involved and be a volunteer for that day, I'm sure that you're already taking sign -ups. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. So um, tell us a little bit about the past um, Operation Backpack program. Operation Backpack, we started when when it started growing. We were always under um, different church umbrellas or right. service organization umbrellas, and so um, we just got to the point where we had grown so much that we were having problems finding an organization that could really handle the amount of donations and things that were coming in for us. So we found that we had that we had basically grown out of the we can be helped by other people and we needed to do our own thing. So that's when, um, that's about the same time that we found out that Volunteers of America had decided that they were going to trademark the name Operation Backpack oh, for really? all their school supply drives across the country. So we knew at that point there was there was this shift happening that we that we were getting too big and that we also couldn't use the name anymore so it just it seemed to make sense at that point to find a name that fit for us so that we wouldn't get told we couldn't use operation backpack anymore and plus that would be a great time if we were going to do that just to to switch over and, and look into becoming our own nonprofit that's fantastic so you are currently a nonprofit we are we got our 501c3 last year uh, about two months before our event mm -hmm. so we are we're a baby nonprofit I mean we've been doing <laughs> this for a long time but uh, with our own number we're we're, we're right just getting our feet underneath us but it's exciting it's exciting to know that that we that we have grown to a point where we are the nonprofit yes not exactly. other people are helping us and and um, do you have a current mission statement for our beyond backpacks we do we our mission statement is that we believe strongly in helping kids start the school year off right so that way they walk into school feeling just like their peers right so that they have the experience of shopping for their stuff and they have the experience of not having to walk into a classroom and be like oh everybody else brought stuff but i don't have anything so just the empowerment of the kids and the families is is really what what our heart is so as they come in with their parents and are led around mm -hmm. they get to pick their own backpack oh yeah yeah, our, our backpack event is different than most of the backpack of events that you have could have heard about. Right. We um, believe that the kids need to shop for their stuff. So when, they, when the kids and the families come, they get um, paired with a guide, yes. and the guide takes them in. And then they start off by going to get their backpack and they can choose whatever backpack they want. If they want, if a boy wants a pink princess one, the boy gets a pink princess there one. There you go. If the girl wants the Transformers <laughs> one, they get it. It doesn't matter to us what they get. What matters is that they felt like they picked out their stuff. And it, it you know, they go from there into getting their school supplies. And it is amazing to see how many kids want the very bottom 
box of crayons yep. of the stack, even though they all look exactly the same. But it's about them feeling like they are choosing. And that's what gives them the sense that they are no different than anybody else that's starting the school year. So luckily, I got to be in charge of crayons and glue <laughs> sticks. And Those are two of the most fun. Oh, I know. And, and you should see the kids. Mm -hmm. Oh, I get to choose? Uh-huh. Oh, it's, that's fantastic for yeah. them. They get to choose the color of their spiral binders. Yep. They get to choose the notebook paper they need. Mm -hmm. it, it's fantastic. It's fun because I think a lot of times with some of, and, you know, any programs that are helping these families is great. But I think a lot of times things are just kind of said, you know, here they are. And our program, we really strive to make it feel like that, that they are the ones doing the choosing. And they are. And they are. <laughs> and it, it kind of slows things down every once in a while, but it's great. It's irrelevant that it slows it down yeah. because <laughs> everybody's having such a great uh -huh. time. All of the it volunteers is. love it so yeah. much. It's fantastic. So I assume that you have a board of directors. We do have a board of directors. We're a very small board right now. There's only eight of us who um, we're, our committee is basically our board because right. we're, we're a baby nonprofit, but we're always looking for other people who may want to come in and, and help us with that. So. so above and beyond the supplies that are donated by many, many people in community across Yamhill County, um, how, you have to have some funds as well. So how are you funded? We are to excuse me, totally okay. donation-led. Um, we don't, because we're just a baby nonprofit, we don't have any grants or anything. Right. Um, so we, we rely on service organizations throughout the county, different businesses who have been incredibly supportive, um, individuals who have been incredibly supportive. Yes. And we're, we really are blessed because every year we look at the number of kids we've got on that list and go, how are we going to do it? Right. And every year the, the county comes through and the communities step up and we have what we need to take care of these kids and families. So, so it's all by donations. That's fantastic. So how and who do you serve at these we serve both the, I mean, we serve the kids with the school supplies and the backpacks, um, but we also strive to have community partners there yes. for the families themselves. So the kids go through and get all their, their stuff, but then when they leave, we have an outside area that has, um, in the past, Kids on the Block has been there, yeah. Habitat for Humanity, different community organizations that can help these families throughout the year so that it's not just about the backpack. It's beyond the backpack. Right. It, and it's things that can help them throughout the school year find the things they need to make sure their school year stays going positively. So community resources are available beyond yes. backpacks. Yes. That's fantastic. So um, how many are you hoping to serve this year? Uh, right now, our <laughs> list. <laughs> right now, our list is capped at 950. Um, we could serve more than that, but that's where we feel like we're going to be able to get the donations in to do. So we never want to to leave a kid without without being able to get anything. We don't want to tell them we can't do it. So we've capped it at 950 this year. And what was it last year? Do you recall? Uh, we were about 850, I believe, so by the time everything was said and done. Um, we had 850 on our list, and then we had um, a lot of no-shows. Right. So what we did after the event was we put together some backpacks, and then we went and, and distributed them to each of the schools. That's so that, smart. So that way, when the school year started, if someone came in and said, you know, we just don't have anything, can you help us? They had several backpacks there that they were able to access. So in past years, it's been at Newbie Elementary. Is it, it true has. this year as well? It is not because of the bond measure right. that passed. There's so much construction going on. Newbie right. will not be ready by the time we have our event. So this year, we are going to be at Sue Buell. Very good. And most people don't, some do know where it is, but it's out. It's out at the out edge of town. Yeah. It's off of... Um, can't even remember the name of the road, um, but it's over there by kind of by Lowe's and in that yeah, area you behind take a left, Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, at the stoplight in what mm -hmm. Booth Bend yes, Road. Yes, that's the one. Yes, Booth Bend Road. Phew. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, what is your demographic? 
Typically, we run about 50-50 with Hispanic families and English-speaking families. Um, that's, that seems to be about the case again this year. So we, we tend to just run about half and half. And you have a lot of bilingual guides. We have some. But we don't have enough. We okay. never have enough Spanish speakers. So look into that yes. camera right there. Please, <laughs> please come volunteer if you can speak Spanish. We need you. Awesome. So how can community get involved? There are several ways you can get involved. One is you can volunteer and come to the event. Um, you would have to, to contact us through volunteer at beyondbackpacks.org right. and then we can get you on that list. The other way, we always set up the day before, so if you're not available on that Saturday, if you're available on that Friday, you can come help set up all the tables. Um, and then we're also, we always look for a cleanup crew afterwards. Right. If and you, it takes a while to do oh that. Oh yes, it does. That, that's a good hour or two hours after the event just to put everything away. Um, if volunteering isn't necessarily what you want to do, we will take donations, sure. either backpacks or school supplies at the different donation sites around town, or we'll take monetary donations. We have a awesome group of volunteers that have abilities to get things at a much cheaper price than most normal people would get. Yeah. So those are great ways to, if you're involved with a church and they're not doing a, a supply drive for us, then I'd love to talk to you and see if maybe we can get your church involved. So, I mean, there's all kinds of ways that, that you can and get And you involved. provide food for this event as well, we right? We do. So can you look at that screen sure. and kind of walk everybody through with some of your needs? Our biggest needs typically are the um, the backpacks. Yes. And I say that because we we have the ability to order like some of the more solid color backpacks or plaid things of that nature. But what we don't really have the opportunity to get is like the character princess sure. transformers those kinds of backpacks that the kids always love. So the more of those we can get from people donating, mm -hmm. the better we feel we have for selection because we don't we make sure that the first kid who comes through the door and the last kid who comes through the door still have the same amount of selection that they did from the beginning. Right. So we don't ever want a kid to feel like, oh, I just got the last one. I know. So we want to have enough to be able to, to kind of go through and pull out some and have a good selection throughout the day. So those kind of backpacks are always, always a need. Um, the other thing that we usually have a problem getting is the Kleenexes. Uh, that's one of our higher ticket items, so it doesn't come in as much. Uh -huh. um, seven inch scissors is also one that we have um, issues getting because it is a higher ticket item. Right. Um, Except Dollar Tree. That is true. If we can find them, if we can find enough there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, this year we've added dry erase markers because it's on the new school supply right. list for every grade. Uh, those are also a higher ticket item that if we can get donations for, that would be great. Um, and then the binders are another, and could be another higher On the item. three ring binders, do you, is there any specific width that you're looking for? Um, different grades are looking for different sizes. So I believe we go anywhere from a one inch all the way up to a three inch. Sure. I, freshmen apparently this year are, are wanting three inch binders. Yeah, that makes sense. So if you, whatever you feel, yep. whatever you see, we'll take. Awesome. We are, we're not that picky. <laughs> And you even need tab dividers for we different classes. And we such. do need dividers. Yep. So that's another middle school. Actually, fifth fifth grade on up is is really what needs the dividers. So in the past, I've done the crayons, mm -hmm. and you really prefer the Crayola brand. Yes. Because there was a little blue brand that you were buying that wasn't quite as no good we. As we found that the Crayola brand holds up better yes. for the year. Some of the other brands they go on sale but our thing is we just want to make sure that what we're giving these kids not only is what they need but is also what's going to hold up for the year we absolutely don't, we don't want them to go in a month later and be like well, well we're crayon. talking about nine months for them last yes so, so crayola it sometimes they can be a little more expensive i know but, but that, not much not much and that's the i mean that really is the universal brand that that works it's what we grew up with exactly <laughs> So colored pencils. 
Colored pencils is another one. Almost every grade needs colored pencils this year. So, um, and then the washable markers, they, they want those for almost every grade this year as well instead of the regular markers. And those are the ones that are a little more spendy too. So I know. So we're just, you know, those are kinds of the things that we're like, you know, if the community can step up and donate some of those things, it would help us. So above and beyond the churches and, and mm -hmm. such, you have some sponsors locally, business-wise, that kind of step up a little bit too, huh? We do. It, it kind of varies from year to year. We don't, I mean, we don't have like a specific sponsor, but um, the Rotary here in McMinnville yes. and in Newburgh has been incredibly helpful. Um, we've had different businesses and different seasons step up and do some big donations um, and it just kind of depends on on the year who who's kind of stepping up and doing that so like I said before though we've been incredibly blessed because it there's always someone that's stepping up to help so this is what a bin looks like it does and so these are locally distributed. Let's talk yes. about drop-off locations for a moment. Okay, I'm going to have to look at my uh, sheet. I so think I don't it's forget. actually oh, going to come up. Okay, that'd be perfect. Um, I know here in McMinnville, On Point Community Credit Union is one of our big donations. Um, both Bymarts and McMinnville and Newburgh yes. are, have donation bins. All the first federal locations in the county do. The only first federal locations that we do not have bins in are Sheridan and Willamina and that's only because Sheridan and Willamina the churches of West Valley run their own program okay. and have for years and so we partner with them and if we get someone from Sheridan and Willamina we send them to them Perfect. and then vice versa so we don't want to step on their that's toes. That's very collaborative. Yes. That's great. That's what we're looking for. So we don't want to step on their toes so those the first federal are are the ones not on this side of the right. county. Um, Citizens Bank, Famous Footwear, the Senior Center and the McMinnville Aquatic Center. Kramer. Serendipity Ice Cream. Serendipity is one as well, yes. Um, the McMinnville Aquatic Center um, was an incredible donation site last year. We never would have thought that, but they really were. I think we have a lot of retired teachers that go sure. to some classes down there. Yeah, which was awesome, I gotcha. Which was awesome. Um, the Blockhouse Cafe in Dayton, and then we've got some incredible churches um, here in town. Co Covenant, Coast Hills, Church on the Hill, First Presbyterian, St. Barnabas, First Baptist, and then this year, Yam Hill United Methodist Church has stepped up to help us as well. Um, they are actually doing a supply drive for us on August 5th from 10 to 2 out at their church. Oh, so, that's awesome. So if anybody's in Yamhill and would like to, to do anything out there, that'd be a great time to do it. Very cool. So. And here it is again in Spanish for yes. those who cannot read English. Yes. That's really important. Um, you also have Kramer's, which is a, nur mm -hmm. a nursery supply. Yeah. And They've been with us since the beginning, and so they we have a bin out there every year. These are great partners within communities, so that's really great. Um, let's see here. Does uh, Beyond Backpacks uh, have continual sponsorships? It kind of varies depending on the season. And, I mean, we hit... Because you have to start right after you... Oh, yeah. Right after you have the event. Yeah. You probably already, already are planning. Yeah. We have different places that do... Um, fundraisers for us almost yes. every year. Serendipity is one that we have a fundraiser there every year. McCabe Chapel does an ice cream social for us every yes. year. And then each year it just seems like it kind of flows and there's some businesses that will be there one year and then not necessarily the next and what well, gives everybody a chance exactly, to play. Exactly. <laughs> and we're fine with that. And that's good. So can community members volunteer to assist during or before or after the event? They can, and we actually encourage that. We would love to have volunteers. Uh, and the way to do that is to just email us at volunteer at beyondbackpacks.org, and our volunteer coordinator will get you on the list, and then you can chat back and forth about so what you So could you guys bring up the banner for um, their Facebook page and email and all of that, please? Um, so what are some of the volunteer opportunities that community might be able to help with? 
The day of, we have um, what are called guides, and those are the people that take the families and the kids through the event. Um, they help them pick out the backpacks, they help them pick out their supplies, answer any questions they might have. Um, personally, that's my favorite. That's kind of where I started mm -hmm. in this organization, mm -hmm. and it's where I got the, the bug to get hooked. So. Um, I'm a little partial to that no. one just because it's fun. Yeah. Um, and then we have uh, people who have to sit at the tables to make sure that the right per, the right kid is getting the right supply. Right, and what grade yeah, that's exactly. associated with. Exactly. And all of that. So so we have that, and then we have people who do games outside. Um, we've been incredibly blessed to have Linfield College RAs come for the last few years to volunteer, mm -hmm. and they just that brings the energy level way up. <laughs> the kids love it. So um, so we have all of them coming, but we're always looking for other community members to come in, um, especially Spanish speaking volunteers. Absolutely. We know, you know like we talked about a little while ago we're about half and half and right. a lot of those request uh, a bilingual guide and sometimes we end up having the kids have to to kind of translate for their parents and that's not what we want to do I understand but sometimes time wise we just don't have any other choice and to get 950 th people through the line oh yeah in the time frame you've got we do about 60 per 15 minutes yes so that doesn't I mean it doesn't seem like a lot until you see because it's not just 60 kids it's then all their family members that's correct and most of the time they don't come with just mom or just dad a lot of grandma times and this grandpa is, yeah a lot of times this is a family event right and so i mean you're talking a good probably three four hundred people going through every 15 minutes yeah i remember you bringing some of the families through mm -hmm. uh, out of a bunch of guides yeah and you need a bunch oh yeah um it's just incredible to 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 watch your face even mm -hmm. i mean you almost tear up in oh yeah the reaction to some of these kids is oh yeah it's just amazing oh yeah and in this day and age you you know you think of kids and you think of you know they just don't they don't think anything's cool or they don't appreciate anything but these kids that come through and these families are just incredible and they're and beaming they the smiles on their face and you could just tell that you've really impacted their life it's amazing so when where and what time is this annual event this year this year our event is august 19th at sue buell elementary school um, we will start at the volunteers start at like 7 30 in the morning yep and then we are planning on being done with the actual event by 12 45 okay and then we have probably another hour or two after for cleanup so do recipients have to sign up in advance to get into this they do we had referral agencies that have had the um, referral application since mid-april the last day to sign up was july 7th okay in years past we have done uh, a phone call system yes where we just put up some flyers said call us and it was first come first serve problem we were finding with that is that we weren't hitting the target demographic that we were looking for we were we were finding that sometimes it was just people that saw the phone number saw that it was free backpack and that's really I mean our heart was really to, to, to help the highest needs families in the county right. so what we found was that when we switched over to a referral system and, and switched over to referral partners that we found that we were really hitting more the target demographic that we were looking for. So um, do you talk to the homeless liaisons at the school district to kind we of do. get some of the information? We do. This year we had um, the referral agencies were places like Family and Youth, yes. Provoking Hope, WIC, Virginia Garcia, the homeless liaisons, right. um, the, YAM, the YCCO, community yes. health workers. So we're basically looking for anybody who has already had contact with these families. And then we're trusting that those agencies are looking at this and going, yes, these are, these are the families that you want to be serving. And that's worked out very, fairly well over the last few years. Yeah, so I bet. It's, been, it's been really so good. So the early learning hub at the YCCO has to be giving you quite a bit of information as well. Yeah, we, we've gotten all kinds of referrals. And so. what about a family place at First Baptist? Are they involved in any way? Because they have a lot of parenting classes and younger kids. Yeah, they, they were a, refer a referral partner last year, 
But this year, when we sent out the mm -hmm. the information, they didn't Chose. they didn't choose to do it yeah. for whatever reason. And and we see that sometimes the different referral agencies just because things may shift with sure. them or whatever. Sure. And we're fine with that. I it's mean, it's just we like just, sponsors. Exactly. We just want to make sure whoever we are ref are partnering with are right. going to be the ones that get us the best. So and even though you've gone beyond your cutoff date, if somebody was in desperate need. Could you still fit them in? At this point, we're not accepting any more referrals just because we know that we're, we are at the 950 that we were looking for. Our, if we have anything past what yes, we... Yes, explain that, please. If we have anything past what we're expecting at the 950, then um, they should... We, we advise them to call 211. And if there's any other way, like last year when we handed out backpacks to the schools, we informed 211, and then 211 was able to let the families know right. and talk to the school. So either call 211 or check at the very beginning of September with your child's school and see if maybe they have some resources as well. It breaks our heart to know that, know. that there's kids out there that we're not able to serve. And we would love to just be at a point where we could just keep the referral window open until the day of our event and accept everybody. Unfortunately, we're just not there. It's not always possible. No. So if you don't know what 211 info is, um, you can also go online to mm -hmm. 11info.org yes. and then go to Yamhill County and uh, type in your zip code and it automatically brings up yep. your city that you're in. And this is for all cities in Yamhill County yes. except Willamina Sheridan because they, they have their yes. own scenario down yep. there. And the West Valley is the ones who really need it the most. Yeah. Well, and Sheridan and Willamina do a great program. I mean, they, they, their small communities, I think last year they served over 250. Yeah. Just in that one community. Yeah. So we, we just, we let them do their thing and they do great at it. So I only have one last question Kay. for you and it's a goodie. <laughs> so what drew you to do this wonderful work in community for those in need? It was actually by accident. Um, I was a new member at Church on the Hill, yep. and Operation Backpack came up on the screen as needing help, and I'm yep. like, okay, I've got some time. And I started out as a volunteer. I started out going and, and being a guide. And then after that first year, I then ended up being the one that led all the guides. Yes. And then after that, I ended up being on the committee. And so uh, now we are at the point where now that we're a nonprofit, I'm vice president. So it kind of it kind of draws you in and and doesn't let you go. But it's not a bad thing. It's a, it's it's, a good it's thing. It's a really good thing. And I think I don't think I've talked to anybody that has been at the event that hasn't been like this is one of the best things I've ever done. It's my favorite day of the year, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, this year, unfortunately, I'm going to be on vacation, oh, no. and so I can't be there. Oh. But I, I encourage all of you, um, if you've never worked at Operation Backpack in the past and now beyond backpacks mm -hmm. in uh, the last couple of years, um, try to tr do it because it's one of the most compassionate and caring events that we do in uh, Yamhill County. And it's for the kids. Remember that. It's for the kids. And the, the difference that you're making is gigantic, enormous amounts of money that they could not afford. Exactly. And this is the offset. Exactly. So Maria Mim, thank you so much for thank being you. here today. And thank you for all that you do. And if you would take back to your board and your committee, what a incredible endeavor that you guys have, are thank taking you. on and working on. I thank will. you. Thank you so much. And thank you for watching. We really appreciate all the support. And um, be sure and catch us also on YouTube. Um, this will air on MCM for a couple weeks. And then it will go to uh, YouTube and my Facebook page. So everybody awesome. want, that wants to see this will get to see it. Awesome. So thank you very much for watching.